Flying over water can give you epic and cinematic video clips, but how do you make sure you do it safely to protect your drone, not have any accidents and not damage the drone in any way and come away with the best video clips possible? Here are 10 tips on how to fly over water with the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Let's jump right in. Now I came across this FAQ from DJI recently and it gave me a laugh because it's so abrupt, but someone asks, is the DJI Mini 3 Pro waterproof? And the answer is simply no. Now it's kind of funny because it's so abrupt, but the reality is this drone is not waterproof at all. You do not want any water on it, around it, or kind of spraying over it. And one of the most sensitive parts of the drone is the battery. You'll see stories online where people have got the battery off any of their drones wet and the, the battery starts to swell and you have to get rid of it. And you just don't want that happening when you're out flying your drone. You want to have hassle-free flying and come away with awesome video clips. Now I have done a ton of flying over water recently with the DJI Mini 3 Pro and I put together some tips to help you fly over water safely and come away with the best looking videos possible. Now, as mentioned, these tips are for the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but if you don't own a DJI Mini 3 Pro, these tips will apply to DJI Mini 2, Mavic 3, Autel Nano Plus, or any drone you're flying. They're pretty much universal tips. So don't be afraid if you don't own a DJI Mini 3 Pro. So let's get into the tips. Don't rely on downward obstacle avoidance. So something I've found with flying the DJI Mini 3 Pro over water and other drones with downward obstacle avoidance is it's not always accurate. I'm not entirely sure why. It might be because of the reflections of the water on a sunny day. It might be because of the translucency of the water. And because of this inaccuracy, it's not practical to rely on that height over the water when you're gauging how high the drone is over the water itself. Because if it says it's higher than it is, you might accidentally lower it into the water. And if it says it's lower than it is, you might rise it up thinking, oh, it, it's too low. And, and in a panic, rise it up. And in reality, you're absolutely fine. When I'm flying low over water, I always find it best to visually look at the drone. Just look at it in real life and see how high over the water it is. I find that a much more reliable way of gauging the height the drone is over the water. Fly slightly higher for smoother shots. If you fly low to the water, the drone can bob up and down. Now the reason for this is the downward obstacle avoiding sensors. Even if you have obstacle avoidance turned off on the DJI Mini 3 Pro, it will still rise up over any obstacles it sees with them downward obstacle avoiding sensors. Now because of the height inaccuracy I explained in the first point, Sometimes the drone thinks it's lower or higher over the water than it is, and it compensates this by rising up and down and bobbing up and down. It, it might think it's really low to the water and it will rise up to protect itself. So the solution to this is simple. Just fly the drone slightly higher. Now, if you follow these tips and get awesome videos and want to make a little bit of side income, I just want to take 30 seconds to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Wirestock. Wirestock helps creators and drone pilots like you sell photos and videos online easily. The benefits of Wirestock are that they distribute your videos and photos to all major marketplaces. You can upload your best video clips, some video clips you get flying your drone over water, and I'm gonna help you get awesome over water video clips of your drone with these tips today. It takes seconds and then Wirestock takes care of the rest. They offer high royalty rates and discoverability, which is important as you want people to find your content. All payments are also sent to one single account and trackable on one dashboard. In terms of commission, it's 15% of paid royalties. They only make money when you do. It's a great platform if you're looking to start making a little side income using the cinematic clips you can get with these tips today. So a big thank you to Wirestock for sponsoring today's video. And if you want to check out their platform, there's a link in the description down below. Don't fly too far out to sea. So let me paint a picture for you. Let's say you fly your drone really far away. You've been getting awesome video clips. You haven't been paying attention to how much battery's left. All of a sudden you get a low battery warning, but there's not enough battery to bring the drone back. Now this is fine if you do that over land. It's not ideal, but you can bring the drone down, land it somewhere safe, and then you can drive or walk to get that drone. But if this happens over water, there's only one place that drone's going, and that's into the water itself. So when you're flying your drone over water, don't fly it too far out to sea. I have to be honest, if I'm flying my drone over water, I rarely fly it more than a couple of hundred meters away. And that's just because I want to know that I can bring the drone back if anything goes wrong. Try these drone moves for the best results. So I've been flying the DJI Mini 3 Pro low over water for a while now, and I put together a selection of some of the drone moves I think give the best results. The first is the top down. And this is the simplest of the lot, but if you've got a top down shot over an area 
that there's maybe rocks with the waves crashing into it. It can show off the dynamic movement and it can look absolutely awesome because it's a perspective that not many people get to see. So how do you do this? Well, it's really simple. You put your drone high up above the subject in the water that you want to record. You point the gimbal straight down. You can do this with the scroll wheel on the controller or if you have the new RC controller, it's the C1 button on the back that will point the gimbal straight down and then you just hit record. The low orbit. Who doesn't love an orbit, especially with a drone? But I find if you do it low over the water and again, maybe around an area with rocks, with the waves crashing into it, it can look super cinematic. So how do you do it? Put the drone low down over the water. I actually find if you point the gimbal down a little bit, it helps with that cinematic look and feel. And then you do an orbit. So to do an orbit right, you press right on the right stick and then left on the left stick. To orbit left, you press left on the right stick and right on the left stick. The next up is the push forward and it's super simple to do. Put your drone low over the water. We want to simply fly it forward, which we do by pushing the right stick forward. And just remember my tip to keep the drone high enough so that you don't get the bobbing up and down effect. The last one is the push forward looking up. So what I do is I find a subject that's on a cliff edge, for example. I put the drone really low down over the water. I gimbal up to face what is ever on the cliff edge, have the drone fly forward, but while looking up at the subject on the cliff edge. And it's just a really unique perspective because again, one of the few ways you can get a shot like this is with a drone out flying over the water. Do a pre-flight check. Now I recommend you do a pre-flight check anytime before you go flying, but it's especially important if you go flying over water, because again, if anything goes wrong, chances are the drone's going in the water itself. Now you don't need to do a 200 point check before you go flying. You just need to spend a few seconds and check a few regular things and you'll be absolutely fine. So what sort of things should you check? Well, I recommend you check if the props are tight, this is especially important if you've been taking the drone in and out of the bag quite a lot, or maybe last time you landed the props clipped some tall grass, just make sure that the props are tight. Make sure that the battery is firmly inserted. Make sure you've heard that click when you put it in. Make sure that the GPS is locked. Now something I do nearly every time I go flying is I take the drone off and I let it hover for 10 seconds because if anything's gonna go wrong, chances are it's gonna go wrong in them first 10 seconds. If I was on a cliff edge about to fly the drone out over the water, I wouldn't just take the drone off and just fly it straight off that cliff edge. I would let it hover for 10 seconds just to make sure that everything is absolutely fine. And you want to make sure that the GPS is locked. Make sure your battery is fully charged. So much can change how quickly your battery drains when flying a drone. The wind speed can make a massive difference. The temperature can make a massive difference. How many maneuvers makes a difference the mode you have your drone in so there's a big difference between flying in cinematic mode uh, cine mode and sport mode and these are all things that can dramatically change how quickly your battery drains and if you've put the drone a couple of hundred meters out over the water and you've lost track of time because you're getting all these awesome clips you can quickly forget how quick that battery can drain and again you can be in a scenario where you don't have enough battery to bring that drone back to you so there's a simple way to avoid all these issues there's two ways you can actually avoid all these issues. Firstly, don't go flying without your battery being fully charged. And secondly, regularly keep an eye on how much battery is left. Clean the drone after landing every time. This is something I personally do and I recommend you do. Now when I bring the drone back, even if it's just to change the battery before going flying again, I always carry a microfiber and I give the drone a wipe down. There's a couple of reasons. One, if you've got mist on your camera, you obviously want to clean that so that you don't ruin your video clips and photos. But also there's some sensitive areas off the drone. You know, you've got quite large vents on the bottom of the drone to vent into the battery area. The area around the motors of the drone are quite exposed and you don't really want water or mist in there. Now it's super unlikely to cause any issues having a little bit of mist or spray on the drone itself. But I just think it's good practice to clean the drone down every time you bring it back to you and especially before you put it into the bag itself. Don't get caught out by the wind. Now the DJI Mini 3 Pro is a super capable drone in the wind, but there's a beginner mistake I see new pilots make all the time. I was guilty of it, I see friends do it too. And that's, you know it's a windy day, but you put your drone up and you fly it off in a tailwind, not realizing it's a tailwind. You don't, you haven't paid much attention to the wind direction itself, but you think, hey, this is absolutely fine. The drone is handling fine. 
You get lots of video clips, lots of photos, you drain the battery nearly completely, you turn the drone to bring it back to you, and you realize then you're flying into a headwind. The drone's struggling to come back to you, you flip it into sport mode, and you're just in this horrible situation wondering if you'll be able to get the drone back to yourself. The other thing with wind is, although the drone is super capable in the wind, gusts can blow around. And if you're low over the water, you don't want the drone to be blown into a wave or any of the rocky areas around a beach, for example. So how do we make sure this doesn't happen? Well, just pay general attention to the wind, wind direction, wind speed, and download apps which will help you do that. A few I recommend is UAV Forecast or XC Weather. I really like XC Weather because it gives you early updates of the wind speed and direction. Watch out for waves, boats, and sea spray. And those are the three things that come to mind when I think of flying over water. You might wonder, well, how would I miss a wave? But let's say you're flying over the water out from a beach and you're getting video clips looking back at the beach itself. You might not realize or see a wave coming behind the drone when you're flying it really low. And if a wave engulfs your drone, well, you know how that's gonna end. Boats again, you might think, well, I would see a boat if I was flying over the water, but let's say you're doing a slider right or left. You're flying your drone sideways. Remember the DJI Mini 3 Pro has no sideways obstacle avoiding sensors. You might not see a boat to the right or to the left. A boat might also come in to the direction you're flying without you realizing it. And you don't want to be in a situation where you accidentally fly into a boat. Sea spray, this is a big one because it's happened to me. If you're flying low over waves and it's a windy day, some of the sea spray can actually kick off the top of the waves, like wispy sea spray, and this can go over your drone. If you're doing an orbit or flying low over a rock formation and waves are crashing into it, what you'll find is when the wave crashes into it, the water sprays up. And if you're flying above that, again, it will go over your drone. These are just things you need to be aware of when you're flying your drone to make sure you get no water on it. If you're on a boat, update the home point. Once your home point is updated, no matter where you move to, whenever you hit return to home or whenever your drone loses signal and it returns to home itself, it's gonna go back to that home point, not, not your controller. So people mistakenly think that the drone will return to their controller and so if they move to a different location, the drone will always come back to them. No, it will come back to your home point. So this is super critical if you're on a boat, maybe you've hand launched from a boat. If you've then drove that boat, that boat's moved, whenever you hit return to home, it's gonna go back and land in the water where you originally were when you took it off. So how do you get around this? So in the DJI Fly app, in the settings, there's an option to update the home point. And if you're moving in a boat, you wanna be doing this as often as possible so that if return to home kicks in, the drone will come back to you on that boat. This is super critical. Make sure you do that if you're moving around on a leg on a boat, because as mentioned, the drone will go back to where you took it off from unless you update that home point. So hopefully these tips will help you get better videos when you're flying over water and allow you to do it more safely and have no issues when doing so. Are there any tips that you know of or you follow when flying over water that I haven't mentioned? Why not comment them down below because it'll help others when flying their drone over water. Now, if you've liked this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better photos and more cinematic videos with your drone, then I have a ton of other content on my channel to help you level up your drone game. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, and you won't miss any of them upcoming videos. If you want to stick around and watch a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend watching. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.